RC Rollins in the building. Happy New Year's, ladies and gentlemen, my crowd. How was it for you guys? I had an okay, pleasant, very soft one. And I tried to get you this list before the year ended. I just couldn't. I was trying to catch up to some movies so that I can give you a great list. And here it is. This is my top 10 best movies, or should I say favorite movies of the year 2017. Of course, I'm not going to try to give you a big review about them because I really don't do movie reviews. I mean, sometimes I do. But, but let's get to this. I will give you the best right now. And I will give you the worst in my other video. They remember, it is an opinion. Everybody has one. Don't massacre me. Don't murder me. My number 10. I have to give a big shout out, even though it didn't come out in theaters, but I have to put it there. The Netflix original, Bright. With Will Smith and Joel Edgerton. Man, the concept for this movie was awesome. I really liked it. I digged it. I mean, there's some boring parts where they're like, come on, keep up with the story. But other than that, Will Smith, his whole character, well, he was such a douchebag. And that's what I like, that Will Smith never plays those kind of a character. So to me, that was new. <coughs> it was refreshing. And of course, that's what made the movie better. Now, number nine. This one came out early in the year. And I really digged it. I really liked it a lot. And I did like the approach that they took it. And of course, that's the Lego Batman movie. Now that movie was funny, it was top notch. I think they did justice to Batman and Robin, even though I'm not a Michael Sarah fan. But it was a fun movie, you guys should, should definitely check it out. It was one of the better cartoon comedies of the year. And of course, I did enjoy the movie for what it was and what they gave us. Now, <coughs> my number eight, that to me was the surprise of the year. Now it's not Get Out. That didn't make my list, but that was also a good movie. But the surprise hit of the year for me was Split with James McAvoy. Now, at Night Shyamalan, from this one to the one that he did, the other one, <coughs> with the grandparents one, he's back to back. And of course, Split being in the same universe as Unbreakable, it was a kick ass movie. James McAvoy brought his A game. And he actually made the movie awesome. I did enjoy this movie. Also, it came out early in the year. But when you have Shamala doing his A game and you have James McAvoy always trying, you're always going to get something special. And this is what this movie is. It's actually a great movie that came out early in the year. My number seven is Shot Collar. Now, I can't really pronounce the guy's name, so I'm just going to say Jamie Lannister is the main character in this movie. And man, they show you how this guy, how this broke stalker turns into a shock collar in a 15 year range movie. And that guy is probably the most awesome character that I've seen this whole year. His, his whole character driven, his emotions that he carries when he's pissed, when he's sad. When he has to get shit done, he gets shit done. I mean, if you were, if I were forward up to me, I would give him at least an Oscar nod, not a win, because I have, I know that there's other actors that did a lot more, but this guy, the way he brought it, it was a great movie. I did love it. Do check it out. Shot collar number six. That one's another surprise of the year, which it was intense, it was greedy, it was suspenseful. It comes at night. Now, there's another movie with Joel Edgerton, and I forgot who the others are, but this whole concept of they have to hide at night because something mysterious comes in, and of course, showing you with flashbacks or not flashback dream sequences and all that all together is what makes the movie overall such a kick ass movie. Very mysterious, very suspenseful, and you don't know what they're dealing with or what's going on. There are some jumpy moments, but the movie overall. It's pretty, it's a pretty tight movie. Like, it's so, so, the way that you need to concentrate on the movie, you just need to concentrate on every single detail to make an answer of what you think it is or what it was. But it comes at night. It does definitely deserve to be on my list because it was very special, unique, and of course, very, very 
uh, should I say, one of those better horror movies that came out this year. Now, dropping down to number five, I'm going to bring in an action movie that people thought that the first one, <coughs> he was just, uh, everybody would laugh at it, but now that they brought the whole world together, it's just becoming more and more better, and I'm looking forward to number three. This is John Wick, Chapter 2. With Keanu Reeves. And this movie is pretty legit. It's kick ass again. They don't show you a lot of action this time around, but they do give you how the world works now. How he's such a badass, how he's more intense, and it shows you more to that concept of the Hitman world. And I love that. I mean, I love that it wasn't all full on action, but it was more of a sequence of sequences of events that happened throughout this Hitman world, which is a pretty kick ass. And you're shocked how big this thing works out or how big this universe is of all these hitmen or not hitmen that work with hitmen and do check it out it's a kick-ass movie number four now shot collar was one of the reasons why i did my video this video so late and this of course is another movie <coughs> which i don't know why i didn't see it from the beginning and I had to wait so long, but War of the Planet of the Apes. First of all, Caesar, you're a great character. You deserve an Oscar nomination because of your whole story arc is such a badass. <coughs> you remember, Caesar is just a, a peaceful ape who just wants peace and live and wants his people to be free. Or his monkeys, his apes, you know. It's almost like a Moses movie. Where he wants to bring his people and leave them alone. No war, nothing like that. And this is what it reminded me of. How Caesar is this strong character that really people see him as a leader. Even though when he messes up, he's still there. Woody Harrelson, of course, bringing his maniac ways to his movie. I mean, when Woody Harrelson actually acts, you never go wrong. This guy usually does act in every movie and doesn't just come and bullshits through it or anything like that but doesn't call in his, his role or anything like that but do watch War of the Planet for the Planet of the Apes it's a good movie and I think out of the three of them for me it was the best movie out of those three and I love that it's not like a big cinematic universe however since you have the original movies it puts me more intrigued <coughs> It gives me more intrigued to go see the other old ones, but I do know that those old movies didn't really age that well. And we are talking movies that came out in 1960s or 50s or 70s around there with Charlton Heston. But who knows? But my number three going all the way down now, we're going to another surprisingly kick ass movie. Which at first I thought it was gonna be okay ish. When I saw it, I was like, damn. This is definitely up there. The Foreigner with Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan. <coughs> this movie is such a kick ass movie. The whole reason for it, you did not expect how Jackie Chan will, would act in this movie. He brought his acting chops, and I'm talking about drama driven, not just action wise. And of course, him being in his 70s, his whole different action views and guns and all that. It's just so different. It's just a different Jackie Chan that we all know and love. And by you knowing that and shutting down your brain and putting the Taken route, a la Liam Neeson, Jackie Chan is just a badass. I mean, I don't know what else can I say. Pierce Brosnan, he just played a politic, that's it. Well, like a gangster politic from Ireland. But Jackie Chan, this is his movie. And I do believe that with this movie, he reinvented himself a whole different thing a whole different i mean how can i explain it i know that he had the he's been trying to change his, his way of doing movies but this movie is his movie at 70 years old and it's like when clint eastwood played the guy from gran torino it was just something different and that was to expect from jackie chan playing this old asian guy who was such a freaking badass now my number two <laughs> this is probably <laughs> I'm gonna say maybe my favorite Pixar movie. Yes, it's Coco. Now one, I am Hispanic that puts a lot of tradition in there and that's why I like it. 
But that whole I, that whole movie, I get it. I get the concept. I get everything. It shows you heart. It shows you memories. It shows you a lot of stuff that you actually start thinking to yourself. And of course, if the movie can bring you a tear, that's it. It deserves to be up there because it is a great movie. And I believe Pixar finally brings, for me, at least in my eyes, something great. Something very, very well written, very well directed. And of course, the spirit of Dia de los Muertos is really captured in that instance. And of course, the main bad guy looking like Pedro Infante serves as a top notch right there. That's a special, extra, unique touch that you can give a lot of Latino Mexican fans that know about the Mexican tradition. And of course, my number one <coughs> is none other than whoosh, Logan. Logan, now what can I say about Logan? It's just, it was a fucking kick-ass movie. I'm sorry about the cussing, but damn. You cannot go wrong with that movie. You just can't go wrong. When I saw it that day, when I saw it in early, what was it, February, around there, March, I knew that that was a kick-ass movie, and I believed that it was going to be my favorite movie of the year, and I was right. Logan is the best action movie of the year, the best western movie of the year, the best drama driven of the year, and when you get Patrick Stewart bringing in its freaking A game, when you have Hugh Jackman really bringing it, and you put a great director like James Mangold, you have yourself a freaking kick ass movie that no matter what that whole section was where they're like what happened to the X-Men, fuck that part. That movie was so good that you don't even care about that. And that's why it deserves to be my number one in my list. That's my top 10, ladies and gentlemen. I know I didn't have your Thor Ragnarok. I know you didn't have the Justice League. I know that I didn't have Get Out. I know that I didn't have Wind River. But guess what? This is my list. All those that I just mentioned right now deserve an honorable mention. But I just did love these movies a lot more <coughs> than the other ones. Because to me... There's more heart, or there's more better character driven, or the whole story arc, even the whole world of the universes is what sometimes matters, and to me, that's what's more kick-ass, when you actually care about the character, as opposed just to the movie, or sometimes the movie's just kick-ass overall, and that's why it deserves to be there. But do, ladies and gentlemen, did you like it, did you not, go ahead and like, go ahead and comment your top 10 or your favorite movie of the year, but definitely... Do subscribe, check out the worst, because those are going to be more jaw dropping. Maybe not, maybe no. But do you guys enjoy this new year of 2018. Swap!